Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things, 21, that God did tempt Abraham. And James 1.13, Hebrews 11.13, he wanted to see where the love of Abraham was. Did it lie in Isaac or did it lie in God? And there are probably times that maybe God in Christian's life, the God will say, who's more important? What's more important? Abraham said, yeah, said to him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. Now you're not going to read Sarah in this chapter. What happens between this chapter is between the father and the son. There is no, you know, woman goddess. It's not Mary, the, the queen of heaven. This is between a man and his son. Abraham becomes a type of God. Isaac becomes a type of Jesus Christ. Moriah, the, the city we're going to, I mean, the, the mountain we're going to read about is Calvary. And we'll look at that now. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. The Lord Jesus Christ has, is the only begotten son of God. Isaac, a type of Jesus Christ. And God acknowledges Abraham, his only son. Thy only son, Isaac. What do you do with Ishmael? There it is. God doesn't acknowledge that Ishmael. As far as God's concerned, there's only one son, Isaac. I'm interested in, with the United Nations and Arabians and the Middle East and U.S. presidents who have supported for gasoline for other things. God says, I only see one son. Genesis 22, 2. Whom thou lovest. Abraham loves him. And get thee into the land of Moriah. That is, will be, Jerusalem. Where the temple is built and then destroyed. Where they got the dumb of the rock right now. And supposedly, I don't know, somebody flew to heaven. I don't care about that religion. This is the place where Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross. This is the place where Isaac is going to be offered by Abraham. This is the place that David is going to buy the threshing floor. This will be the place that uh, Solomon will build the temple. This is the place where uh, Ezra will build the temple. This is the place where Jesus Christ will walk and talk. And offer him there for a burnt offering. And Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world. He's a burnt offering. He went into hell and deposited our sins. He said, I thirst upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So here's Moriah. Here's Jerusalem. But I'm going to tell you, bring him somewhere else. From Moriah. And the Bible states that Jesus Christ died outside the gates. This is prophecy. They brought him out of the city and crucified him. Genesis 22, 2. Abraham rose up early in the morning. You realize when, it looks like that when Jesus had the last supper with the disciples, all the way to it is finished. It does not look, 
anywhere where Jesus slept that whole time. There was a kangaroo court in the middle of the night. When it was morning, they rushed him off the pilot. When the cock crew to tell us that the sun had risen, Peter had denied him three times. And we are given the times of the day that when he did certain things on that, on that cross. And saddled his ass. That don't look like it's anything, does it? And yet before Jesus Christ went to Calvary, he came in on an ass, a colt, that had never been ridden. And two of his young men with him, he died on Calvary in the midst of two men. And Isaac, his son, claved the wood for the burnt offering. There's the cross. Jesus Christ carried his cross. And rose up, there's the resurrection, and went into the place of which God had told him. Then the third day, resurrection, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham said unto his young men, Now a type does not go all the way 100%. There are excellent types in the Bible, but they're not exact. Here he says to the young men, Abide here with the ass. Well, that didn't happen on Calvary. Those two thieves went all the way up on the hill with Jesus and suffered and died with Jesus. So this is where the two types for these men here stop. Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder in worship. God went with Jesus Christ until sin came on Jesus Christ. And come again to you, that would be the resurrection. We know Isaac doesn't die. We've already said, but that's the type of the resurrection there. I'll go up with my son, and we're going to come back down together. Hebrews 11 says, Abraham was fully purposed he was going to kill Isaac on that mount. And whether he was going to stand, kneel, or sit, he was going to wait for God to resurrect that boy because he knew Isaac was the only son that God had promised him. And if God would have taken his life, God would have brought him to life. Come again to you. That is the faith of Abraham. He's going to kill that boy. God already said in verse 2. He's a burnt offering. You don't bring a burnt boy back. When he says come again to you. That boy is going to be alive and well. And Abraham's full purpose right now. Is he's going to slay that boy. There's resurrection right there. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, as Jesus Christ carried his cross. He took the fire in his hand and a knife. No, that wasn't at the cross. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Isaac knew something. Abel knew something. Noah knew something. It's blood. Isaac knows enough that, Father, we're supposed to have a lamb here, and there is no lamb. Where is it? And we are before the law. We are before Exodus. There is no Passover. And yet Isaac is telling us that in order for the Old Testament, before the law, in order to please God, we need a lamb. Where did he get that from? He got that from his father, which got it from God. And we see in the New Testament, behold the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. God himself, a lamb. Now, what do you think the Jehovah Witnesses do with that verse? Let's look at it again. My son, God 
capital G, capital O, capital D. We know that God is Almighty God. We know that God is Jehovah that Abraham followed. There's no other God in Abraham's life but God in the Bible. Okay? Will provide himself. That goes back to God. A lamb. That night when, when God speaks to Moses and says, listen, this is the, the rules and regulations for the Passover lamb. The lamb. A lamb. Your lamb. When John the Baptist sets forth, he says, behold, the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Isaac saying, where's that lamb? For our sins. And Abraham says. It's God. He'll provide himself. Scripture with scripture. Acts 20.28 20, says. God's blood purchased the church. God is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the lamb. Scripture with scripture. There it is. Now you don't believe that. You teach anything else. You're defying this. And Guaranteed, modern Bibles change that. It's not even worth looking up to get even. I wouldn't even tell you what the modern Bibles say. Because it's foolish. And then, a lamb, Exodus 12, verse 3. Notice 12. It's a fire altar. God is going to, to burn that lamb in hell. You know, some people don't even believe Jesus Christ went into hell for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now look at the faith of, of Isaac. Okay, God's going to give him land? Okay, let's go. Just, just wonder where it was, Dad. And they came to the place which God had told him of, Abraham. And Abraham built an altar there. There's no hesitation. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. There's a specific order that God has. And bound Isaac his son. Now we just read that Abraham is a hundred years old. Now we don't know what the ages they are here. But you're telling me that a hundred year old man has, has, was able to grab hold a young child and wrestle him to be burnt and given, I don't think so. What you read here is that Isaac, like Jesus Christ, he gave in. Okay, Father, here I am. You just said God's going to provide himself a lamb. There's no lamb here. So I will give myself. Do you see the faith of Abraham and do you see the faith that Abraham taught his son Isaac in God? This is remarkable. Let's just say for, I don't even know what ages they are, but let's just say, I would assume that if this young boy, young man, would have overthrew his, his over 100 year old father to get away. And yet that doesn't happen at all. And the picture of Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ said, Father, I'll go. And in that garden three times, nevertheless, thy will will be done. Now, he didn't want to take that sin. It's not that Jesus Christ didn't want to die. He didn't want to be that personification of sin. He realized how wicked sin was. So Isaac has no fear like Jesus had no fear of dying. Came to the place where God had told him of Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. You got to have your wood in order. And bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Isaac the type of Christ is obedient unto death. Abraham is the type of father that spared not his own son. Abraham fetched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. 
Hebrews 11, 19. I'm going to kill this boy. And I'm going to sit back, stand back, kneel back, whatever I'm going to back. I don't know. I'm going to watch God resurrect that boy because I'm going to bring him down to meet those two men again. He's got the knife in hand. He's, Isaac is going to die. If there's no verse 11, verse 10, where we are, Isaac is going to be dead. But gentlemen, verse 5, and come again to you. So we're going to go up. We'll be back. He's going to be dead. He's going to be back. He's going to be dead. Now, as a natural thing outside the Bible, would you plan anything to kill anything, a person or an animal, and then turn around and say, well, I'm going to bring it back. We're going to come back. No, absolutely not. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Just keep your place there, but let's look at this. Hebrews 11, because it's a remarkable statement of resurrection and faith in Genesis. And you can miss this cross-reference. Hebrews 11 and verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried. Okay, we saw that in Genesis 22, 1. Let's not argue it. It that happened. Offered up Isaac. You see what the Hebrew writer said? He offered Isaac. Isaac is bound and tied to that altar. He will be the sacrifice. And that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. The offering, the promises was, hey, you're going to have a son and out from his sea will be as much as the stars and as much as the sand of the sea. I will make you a nation. Abraham says, I believe that. I believe you so much, God, if I kill that boy, you're going to raise him from the dead. Because you said there will be no other. That is the boy. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, resurrection, even from the dead. Do you see Abraham is going to kill that boy? Verse 10. There it is. Back to Genesis 22. He's going to kill that boy, and he's going to expect God to resurrect him. Remember, Abraham doesn't know what's going on. He, he's just doing what God told him. I want you to take that boy. I want you to bring him to this place. I want you to put him on the altar. I want you to kill him. Okay. And we've gone wrong with this because you're going to see later on in the book of Exodus, uh, in the book in the Old Testament, they're going to kill and slay their boys and girls. To another God, not God. And God said, I never required you to do that. I did it to Abraham. I did it to no nowhere else. Does God tell anybody to kill their children or their wife or their whoever? Except for a, a nation, a country of Israel, to go in there and those that be sinners. But individuals, no. Your child, no. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son, period. And the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Look who would show up in this thing right here. Jesus Christ. According to the date here, estimated 1903 years, Jesus Christ will be on that cross. Thereabouts. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Isn't it great that Abraham listens to God and doesn't fight God? Wait a minute, Lord, let me finish what I'm doing. And many of us tell God, Wait a minute, Lord, let me finish what I'm doing. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad. So he's still young. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. And seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, 
from me. From me. Let's go back to 22.1 again. And it came to pass after these things that God did take, tempt Abraham and said him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. Take, and, excuse me. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering. The angel of the Lord is speaking. He says, Verse 12, For I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from M E. Who is the one speaking in 22.1? God. Who's speaking in 22.2? God. Who's speaking now? The angel of the Lord, and he says, I'm God. There's only one that can say that. Michael can't say that. Gabriel can't say that. Satan cannot say that. Capital G, capital O, capital D. Jesus Christ is God. Genesis 22. And don't bother, I don't know, I could be wrong about this. I'm wrong on many things. Don't bother taking a Jehovah Witness with his Bible and open up Genesis 22 and try to show this, because I guarantee it's probably, I would say 85% chance it's probably been changed. I know they take God and they change it for Jehovah. But Jesus means Jehovah saves, but... Me, 12, that's Jesus. 12, verse 12, Jewish tribe. Oh, it gets better. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. He just see with that knife in his hand, about there, and he looks up, and there, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket. It's like a thick bush and pricklies. Believe me, you'll know if you've been through a thicket. By his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Now that ram becomes Jesus Christ and Isaac is set free. Isaac was intended to die, but the ram took its place. Isaac now becomes a type of Barabbas. Isn't that interesting? Caught by the horns. When he goes to Revelation, the horns, the horns, the horns. So a ram is type of Jesus Christ. So you got an automobile truck that's called a ram. What a mess. Ram tough used to be. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide where Jesus Christ is nailed to the cross they say it's called Calvary oh, what's the other name Calvary Gagatha which means the skull so when you got Calvary Baptist Church Calvary Temple Calvary whatever you got you got your church named the skull did you think about that one and Abraham said the name of that place is God will provide. And on that spot is where Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. Jehovah Jireh. And I apologize for not being able to pronounce it. As it is said to this day that Moses is writing. Usually when it's as to this day, unless it's completely where Moses wasn't around to write what was written. Unless God gave the, the revelation. When Moses writes this, this spot is still called God will provide. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Remember Jesus Christ dies outside the city. And the Lord saw it. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Again, the Jehovah Witness Bible, I believe it says Jehovah. And the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, before he came in the flesh, before given the name. See, Jesus was never called Jesus in the Old Testament. The time that he has been called Jesus, when the angel Gabriel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And at the eighth day, when he was circumcised, and they called his name Jesus. That's when he became Jesus. 
the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham. Now remember the attitude that he got from the Pharisees? And he said, Abraham, look forward to my day. Chapter 22. Abraham, look forward to when I suffered and died on that cross. Because what happened? I will go into hell, deposit the sins, pick up the keys of death and hell, I don't know, go through the gates, walk across the gulf, and say, Hi, Abraham, how you doing? Hi, Jesus. And some of the captives were set free. He had a meeting with one of them thieves. He had to go over Abraham's bosom to get him. But uh, out of the heaven the second time, First time was verse 11. First time, God, it was God that spoke. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three times. Look at that. By myself, the angel speaking, have I sworn. What angel can make an oath? But Jesus. Unless he's a fallen angel, and I don't think he's a fallen angel. Saith the Lord. By myself have I sworn, the angel of the Lord speaking, saith the Lord. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you profess whatever religion you are, and I apologize if I have left your religion out, if you teach that Jesus Christ is not God, we're 22 chapters into the Bible and you failed. We still got a 65 more books of the Bible. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son. Again, God doesn't ask any parent to do this. This is once in a lifetime. Only one man went into a whale, and died, and went to hell. And came alive, and that whale vomited him out. Only one person. Only one person that God say, build an ark. What do you do in Tennessee? I don't know. Only one person that God say, if you eat a fruit, you're going to die. No one else. So you can't go and say, start a religion. I'm gonna, we're going to sacrifice our children because... No. You can't. This is the blessing, making happy. I will bless thee and multiply. I will multiply thy seed. This is God, Jesus Christ speaking. As the stars of the heaven. Now remember, there's no pollution now. Only pollution that would be happening in Abraham's time would be smoke from fires, cooking, and being warm. Okay? What he can look out at the midnight sky with no moon would be a far more stars than what we would be able to see today. No artificial light, no fluorescent, no light bulbs, no car lights. The only light man would have would be a candle and a torch. He would see those stars and be remarkable. I can imagine what the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper and the other celestial uh, signs they have. I can imagine what they look like. Orion's Belt. Be bright. All those stars, he said, you know what? There's going to be more children for you than there is. And who knows how many Jews there have been. This is 1872 B.C. You realize Isaac is going to have 12 sons of his own and one daughter? And then from there, population growth. What? Jacob. Jacob. Excuse me, Jacob. Isaac's going to have Jacob, and then Jacob's going to have 12 sons, and then boom. Have you ever read Numbers? Ooh, that's a lot of people. Jacob's going to have 12 boys. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. Can you even think about... I want to make a trip to the west side of Florida or something. They say that that sand looks like snow over there. A grain, have you ever seen sand under a microscope? 
It's beautiful. You know where they are right now? They are in a desert climate. You know what they see north, east, west, and south? Sand. And your children are going to be as much as that. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And that will happen in Joshua. Problem is, when you get to Ishmael, Ishmael is going to be dwelling amongst Israel. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And how does that happen? Hebrews 6, 13 to 20. That happens through the Lord Jesus Christ who is born of Abraham. There are nations that will believe on Jesus Christ corporately. They will be called the sheep nations. This nation once was was for God in the Bible and Jesus. No longer. Once was. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, happy, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Bring your son, pull it, stop, don't kill him. Hey. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. That's where we left Hagar. That's where he bought that land with the back with the animals from Abimelech. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. It's 44 miles from Jerusalem to Beersheba. You wonder, did Isaac and Abraham tell the men what happened that day? What was it? And again, Sarah had nothing to do with this. You can't throw Mary into this. I'm not, Mary is a wonderful woman. She, there's no wife here. There's no mother. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Now we just had the beautiful, great story of Calvary. Now we have a paragraph mark. That it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milka, she had also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Abraham and Nahor are brothers. He's got nephews. Nephews. Huz, his firstborn, Buzz, his brother, Carmel, the father of Amram, and Chista, Chista, and Hazel, and Paldash, and Jela, and Bethel. You say, what, what's going on here? What is this all about? Look, and Bethel begat Rebekah. That is going to be Isaac's wife. And Isaac and Rebekah are in the line of Jesus Christ. Had Abraham killed Isaac, and nothing would have happened thereof, Rebekah would never have a husband, and there would be no line of Jesus Christ. So, looks like in Genesis 22, Satan intervened. And some preachers say, well, Satan would tell God, say, listen, God, I've got a whole bunch of people up there who will worship, and they will give their children's lives for me. That's what some say. Maybe, maybe not. And God would say, well, you know what? I've got one man like that, like Job. Well, Abraham said, and Satan would say, well, let's give him a try. Job wanted to. And God would say, okay, go ahead. Let's do it. You realize Genesis 22 of all the population in the world, only one man loves God enough? When you are a born-again, Bible-believing Christian that does what the Bible is, you are the minority. And Bethlehem begat Rebekah, that would be Isaac's wife later, and ate Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his concubine, whose name was Ruma, she bare also Teba and Ganon and Tahash and Mecca. And we close out the gospel with, with the genealogy and partial genealogy as we reach out to Jesus Christ. It's remarkable. 